This time of year, I think the key word for success is flexibility. You clear this other line rush. The day before he gets here, unfortunately, we have a front come through. Really anything can swim up right here. What was that? That's selfish, 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 oh, selfish. Well, right here, just swam. I mean, I don't think Rush and I have ever fished so hard to catch one sailfish. Oh, he's going right back at us. My name is Ali Husseini. I grew up in Southern California and now operate one of the largest sport fishing websites in the just world. Just another day at the office. My office, not yours. <laughs> I'm Rush Maltz. I got you, what you saying? Florida Keys native and career fishing guide for the past 20 years. Fish, when I come out to California, you can let me catch all the three on the pontoon. Our passion is our profession, and we know there's more to fishing than just the catch. There's a good mark right there. That's what I like to see. That's the one! He's not superstitious, because that's bad luck. Woo! All right, get with him, come with him. We explore the people, places, and species that make up the culture of fishing. Hold it away from the boat. We'll pull it up on the side right here. It's going to have two little tabs. We'll open them up, flip the door open. And when you look in there, if there's crabs, they're going to be like this. The Keys in itself is a very unique place. Not just the geography, not just the people, but our weather patterns are pretty unique. I'll hold the trap, help you out. Just reach down in there with both hands, <laughs> grab both the claws. Like oh, this. you don't try to grab them from behind? Right now it's January in Florida, and for me, I love this time of year here. The weather is the best, everything's around. Depending on what day it is, you can catch a wahoo, you can catch a sailfish, bottom fishing's really solid. But what comes with that cooler weather, unfortunately, is cold fronts and storms. Pull them up. We'll take a look at them. If they look like they're going to be uh, legal size, we'll take this little thing. Every day when you leave the dock, you have a plan in your head. Things don't always go as planned. All right, our first trap's right up here. Perfect example, this trip, I planned on Ali coming down. I wanted to show him something he hadn't really seen yet and that was catching speedos, slow trolling them around, looking for wahoos. The day before he gets here, unfortunately, we have a front come through. Once you grab the trap, I'll just turn it so we drift broadside in the wind. All right. I have to have something for him to do. It's under the boat. Yeah, just let us blow down off drift of off it. Drift off of it. Yeah. One thing Ali likes, and that's eating. So the bottom's concrete? Yeah, that's uh... for the weight. Ollie loves stone crabs. And then you just grab that and lift up. Yeah, there you go. Oh, that's a nice one. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, we got four. A lot of guys on the West Coast don't know what a Florida stone crab is. It just doesn't make it out our way. Just and like grab the them hard, because they're strong. You'll be surprised how strong they are. Okay. Boom. Okay, see how I'm keeping them apart? Yep. All right. My middle finger is going right in this knuckle right here. Okay. Okay, then it's in. And pop. Kind of twist you it. Just don't want to, you don't want to rip it. Florida stone crab is a unique animal. It's really not a big crab. The body's only about this big. The cool thing about them is they've got these giant claws, and inside of those claws is some of the finest seafood you'll eat anywhere. Oh yeah, you don't have to measure that one. Okay. This one's good too, but I'm gonna show you with this one how to measure it. And we're just throwing these in the bucket. Yep, right in the bucket. So we're just gonna go right here, and even after you pop them off, they'll still bite, so watch out. Oh, really? Yeah. That's a good tip. <laughs> right from the bottom of this knuckle right here. That Obvi little nub? Yep. Okay. Obviously that one makes it bite quite a bit, gotcha. you know what I mean? Gotcha, quarter inch over. Yeah. so you're okay. good to go. When I first started coming to the Keys, I quickly learned that I really like Florida stone crab. That's oh, okay. damn, this That's thing's okay. loaded. There's a good one. There's a big one in there, too. Let's take a quick look. I hate to, uh, you know, pop yeah, prematurely. He's, he's good. Quarter over or something. Okay, middle yeah. finger here. Yep. And then Push, arm. pressure. Perfect. Uh, yeah, okay, Perfect. Cool. If you feel if that, that snap. That one clean. Yeah. yeah, the other one just Basically, my son, my brother-in-law, me, we're allowed five traps per person recreationally. All it is is a little square trap, plastic, short piece of rope, and a styrofoam buoy. We put them out on these little hard edges we know that the crabs like to frequent. That one might be close. Let me see them again. Really? Mm-hmm. All those snaps. So no, he's short. Okay, so just chuck him. By next moon, he'll be ready to go. What? They'll molt, yeah. In a month, this guy will be legal? Or close to it. How often do they molt? 
Once a month. Every no morning. way. Yeah. You know, lobster fishing, crab fishing, anywhere else in the world, the crab dies. It's just part of the game. Here, the really cool thing about this is, is the crab does not die. He goes back in the water. I guess they molt every moon phase once a month. And when he molts next time, he's gonna have a little arm sticking out, molts again, it's gonna look like a little claw, and eventually he grows a new claw. So you can see that baby claw just growing back now. Yeah, yeah. so how long, did that four or five molts? Yeah. Really no harm to the crab other than him losing his claw. He grows them back and you can basically just keep reharvesting those claws as they get to be legal size. Now, how do you get them to pinch you? Very good. Legal? Totally. First Should of all, you right. pass it off to your buddy. <laughs> Take those gloves off. Biggest difference between opening a trap and putting your hand in a hoop net is those claws. You have got a very angry crab with very, very strong pinchers. And if you're not careful, that dude will break your finger. Oh, he's locked up. This is awesome. Oh, he's got me good. Dude. So fortunately, I had a well-skilled and trained local guide by the name of Captain Rutch Maltz, and he was going to show me how to handle and work with these crabs. Oh, and he's got me right in the like, side of my skin. Captain Rush giving crabbing oh. tutorials to the new guy. What's going on, Rutch? <sighs> Didn't end so well for old Rutchy. Unfortunately, we were goofing around and he was showing me how the best way to remove the claw, didn't pay attention, slacked up on one of his hands a little bit, loosened his grip, and he paid the price. <laughs> let me see your finger. Holy smoke. Wait, hold on, let me see. Oh, that hurt. Local Knowledge is brought to you by Evan Root. Pen, let the battle begin. Yeti, built for the wild. Sea Keeper, once you feel it, you'll never boat without it. Seaguar, the inventor and perfecter of fluorocarbon fishing lines. Bubba, the ultimate lifestyle. Nomad Design, crafted by experience. And by BDOutdoors.com. So we're marking a few fish on the bottom here. We're gonna set up, I'm gonna put the anchor down and we're gonna fish some on the top, you know. Top and bottom, kind of. Top out. and bottom, I know you like the bottom fish a little bit. Little we're bit. basically getting a late start because we pulled the traps this morning, wind died down. One thing that I love about my backyard here in Key West is you can make something happen in a short period of time, fishing wise. A lot of activity down there. With the Florida Keys being where they're located, you know, you have really close access to some great fishing. The edge of the reef is kind of like the demarcation line, you know, between the offshore fishing and the inshore fishing here in the Keys. Fortunately, the edge of that reef in most places is like 10 miles offshore. And in a CV like ours, you're talking about a couple of minute run. I'm gonna have to spread that other line out a little bit. This one? A lot of times when I leave late in the afternoon, I like to set up somewhere, fish the bottom and fish the top. Set out a couple rods and kind of feel things out. Little guy? Not tiny. A uh, little bit of dig to him, huh? He's digging a little, might be the guy. The man in the pink suit? We're on like, the bottom? Yeah. Is there groupers and stuff here too? Uh, yeah. This feels snappery, this feels like the man. We run our regular program, you know, get set up, put the anchor down, put the chum bag in, kind of get that life building behind the boat. Ooh. Looks like uh -oh. A... oh, that's delicious right there. Oh, cool. That's a nice one too. Big old, remember these guys? Rubber from, lip. From South Carolina. Wow, that, Same lift them straight up and in. Straight up and in, I think. You got him, Coach. That's, that's a nice porgy. Guys out our way have no idea what a porgy is. I, I think technically it's a kind of grunt. Whatever it is, it is the most delicious little fish that you're going to catch here. It's almost like eating crab when they're fresh. Uh, we caught one a couple years ago, and you said that. You're like, dude, take him home and cook him. And I did. He was excellent, excellent eating. That with, that with your crabs right there is going to go really well. You're saying box this guy, huh? Oh, absolutely. It's an awesome table fish, you know, so I get a porgy, we're stoked. Me and the camera guys got dinner, you know, for the next couple of days, and then right on cue, start chumming. Oh, yeah. What is it? 
think it's a, it might be a little tuna, tuna? Or a king. It doesn't look like a king. Nah, it's shaking its head a lot like a little king. Cause sometimes you catch a lot of little kings on this bottom. Little being like 24 inch or something? Can be. Snakes, we call them. Yeah, this is definitely a little king. Ah! So you know what? I'm gonna keep this guy, actually. I'm gonna use him for a little cut bait. Where do you want him? I don't know I'm headshotting a kingfish, but it seemed important at the time. <laughs> <laughs> for chum. This time of year, I think the key word for success is flexibility. You can't always go offshore and catch a swordfish. You can't always run 75 miles. So you gotta take what it gives you. What do you got? Hard saying. Hopefully not a little kingfish or a silky. That's a yellowtail tuna. I recognize the fight. No yellowtail out here, buddy. Yellowtail tuna, buddy. Oh, yellowtail tuna. You've got a very big range. Feels more like a blue runner. All right. Well, I beat you for the smallest mutton today. People always ask me, hey, what are we gonna catch? What are we gonna catch here? I'll run through A, B, C, and generally, when I'm on the reef or right outside the reef, I'm gonna throw in there a sailfish could possibly swim up. What do you got, big boy? God, these are nice. Such a pretty fish. Oh, another rainbow. Oh, they yeah. are, they're super no, cool. They're back there. Funny, like it, looks like a, it looks just like a mahi going away, didn't it? I was gonna say that. Such a pretty fish. They are cool as heck, man. Nobody eats them here. No, I mean, yeah, they do. They <laughs> eat them with sashimi. Yeah, the Mexicans turned us on to eating them raw years ago. We used to throw them, they get big down there. Big, 12, 15 pounds. They are one of the coolest fish, man. I really dig them. One of Rush's famous quotes that he gets beat up for on the boat off camera is, you know, maybe a sailfish will swim up. Sails, literally anything could swim up right here. Jesus, could Jesus swim up? He has no joke said that 200 times in the last five years, and it's happened once. What was, oh, selfish, 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 selfish. Oh, where? Right here, just swam down this way, you chasing sure that, that shark, 100%. Sure that shark? There's not purple sharks, selfish. So every time we put the anchor down, first joke is, maybe a selfish will swim up. I hate to admit it, but in this case, my boy was right. See him? Got him? Watch out, Rod. Oh, he might've been going down to your bait. No, he ate this bait. No, we, I saw him going down. You got gloves? Yeah, right on top of the console. Anytime you're on the edge of the reef or right outside of it, you're throwing these pilchards in the water, you're live baiting, a sailfish could swim up. You can imagine just being a tourist from the Midwest or something, you know? You're down here fishing, the weather sucks, catching a bunch of short fish, probably not too aware of the old Key West magic, and look what's swims up to the boat to check you out. It's a fish of a lifetime for most people, you know? You might have to follow him, Ollie. Uh, you want me to chase him? I mean, not yet. We're a little jaded, we catch a lot of sailfish, but it's not lost on us, man. That's an awesome, awesome fish. And as you can always count on, he eats the lightest rig we've got in the water. And now we've got a really big Florida sailfish and we're trying to baby it on 30 pound test. That's awesome catching a sailfish that weight. <laughs> Well, I wasn't on the bottom. I was on the Oh, uh, no, I knew you were going midwater. No, I knew what you were doing. I'm just saying, like, having them flipping around with that big old sinker, not ideal. No, it's not ideal, but I'll take it. <laughs> not ideal is pretty good today. You know, once you put the spread out for the tunas and stuff, I'm generally fishing them on light leader. Uh, 30 pound, 25 pound, light stuff. Sometimes all it takes is a little shark, a little change of location. Little change of sharkation. Are you sure it's a sail? Pretty sure now. Rush, I mean, how do you feel about that? Oh, don't Look stab at that! Me. Don't stab me. He's getting it. Yeah, he wanted to come right up here and finish you off. What? The way I've been going lately. <laughs> he thought the thumb was bad. Sailfish, for instance, comes up, eats one of the baits. Now you're fighting that fish on a 30 pound test leader and a tiny, tiny hook. All right, start, crank him up. Let's, let's just follow him. Let's land this fish. I had a leader trail and I didn't want to wrap it in the wheels. All right, yeah, give it a little gas. Let me, let me get a little bit of this line back. I mean, I don't think Rush and I have ever fished so hard to catch one sailfish. All right, it's coming right back at us. You can bring him down, steer him down starboard side. I'm gonna come down this side right now. I got a, I got a one-up hook on him. 
I mean, dude, you know, what can I do? Dude, that is a Florida donkey. Yeah, I don't want to put a lot of pressure on it. No, I'm just worried about wearing that hook or that leader out too. The chances of landing that fish go, go down quite a bit. I mean, he jumps one way, that line breaks immediately. Dude, I'm using my tippy. I can't grab him until he's go way back here. Back and I'll let him go if he goes. Okay. I'm like literally not even wrapping. You're good. You're good to take off. And to make it a little bit more challenging, there's an eight ounce sinker swinging around every time that fish is jumping and going crazy. Walk him down and grab that snout as quick as you can. As fast as I can. Yeah, no, let him go. I will. I will. Go, oh. go. I can't. Okay, okay, okay. Easy, easy. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah, you got it, you got, got it. Got him. There you go. All right. Yeah, like this. I got him. Ow. Got it. Good oh. job, man. Hey, nice work, dude. 30 pound test. Little tiny hook. And he was wrapped around that bill like you tied it there. Good thing we had him on the wire leader. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I love when a plan comes together. Look at those spots on them. Oh, it's amazing. Look at that purple. And they come and go just so fast, I know. you know? All right, buddy, let's get, let him go. All right, later, dude. Neutral. Dude, on 30 pound and a sundowner, I'll take that all day long. Local Knowledge is brought to you by CV Boats, Lead the Way, Costa, See What's Out There, Mustad, The Standard in Saltwater, AFCO, Any Fish, Any Water, Sea Deck, Your Boat Deserves Sea Deck, JL Audio, How We Play, Casa Vieja Lodge, Experience five-star angling in tropical Guatemala. The Saltwater Angler, Key West. And by Taco Marine. This time of year, leaving late like we did, you know, you always have in the back of your mind that you're gonna see that late afternoon, awesome tuna bite. Can you clear this other line, Rush? The lower the light gets, the more bait you get out there, the show's about to begin. Oh, tuna's on the bow. Oh, that might be what this is, Rush. Tuna's on the bow. You know, we get set up and we get right back to work. We start chumming, put some baits down, keeping our eyes open, and what do we see on the horizon? Black fin tuna. Tuna, tuna. Feel tuna? -ish. Yes, sir. I see him, he's right here. Black fin tuna for these guys is really their bread and butter tuna fish. The little black fins will pull, man. Oh, that's tug. He's walking away. We've been seeing some big ones out here, too. He's not small, I mean, not a huge one. They're always around. They pull hard. There's good numbers of them. They're not hard to trick. Look at them behind us going crazy under the birds. You know when you get them up, bud. He's right here. It's just a great game fish, and it's always on tap. Oh, I thought you took it. Got it? We know that character. Look at that guy. Man. You Leave forget, a light on that thing. You forget how hard these things pull. You know, I always tell people when we're drifting, looking out there, keep your eye out. Look for any kind of explosion around the boat. Look for the fish busting. Because uh, generally, you're going to see it. Wherever those bait balls go, depending on the tide, the wind, how fast you're blowing away from the bait, is where those fish are going to come up first. These are certainly not the smartest tuna. No. You throw a little bit of chum, they just show up, eat everything. Do they get picky here? Oh yeah. You see them, you can't hook them? Yeah, you gotta drop down in leader size, hook size. Oh. Generally these fish, you know, they got big eyes, they can see pretty good, and you're fishing them in clear water. People are amazed by how small a hook we use. I'm usually using a 1-0 to a size one hook to catch these fish. Tiny, tiny hook. Captain Russ, I caught another tuna fish. You got a tuna fish? Come on, dude. Look at that. Good one, huh? That's a pretty one there. 
On this trip, it was like so many other trips before, you know, just put your time in, be flexible, watch the weather, kind of take the best available fishing that the Keys is offering you right now. The twist on this trip though was a Yeti full of awesome Florida Keys stone crab going home to San Diego for my friends and family. Right. You know, we were contemplating coming out after doing the crab thing, a little windy. It's late, but there's one thing you know, you, you can't catch them from the house. No, dude, that's as good a sundowner as you could ask for. I mean, man, those tuna. I always tell people, look, we'll go make something happen. If plan A isn't working, I got a ton of tricks up my sleeve. We'll go make something happen. Like I said a million times, man, here anything can happen. Yeah.